Psychological Factors and Mental Skills in Wrestling by Ramiro Mendez. Introduction. Wrestling is understood as being one of the oldest sports in existence. It dates back to the ancient Olympic Games. Due to wrestling being performed under intense conditions, it is suggested to master psychological qualities for successful competitive performances. This presentation will focus on basic knowledge of the sport and psychological factors and skills required for success in freestyle wrestling. Now to summarize the video, we will discuss the different types of wrestling, five ways to score in a wrestling match, conditioning and training for wrestlers, psychological factors, mental skills, and the development of a competition strategy. Types of wrestling. There are many types of wrestling which have developed throughout history. Here I have several popular forms which have come about and influenced the style I will be discussing in this video. To begin, sumo wrestling was first developed in Japan and it served as a staple in Eastern culture. In this form of wrestling, a victor is determined by forcing the opponent out of the ring. Next, in sambo wrrestling, we observe a form of wrestling to, we're, to what we are familiar with here in the United States. However, this form developed in Russia and there are various other forms um, of wrestling which end in submission. Um, now in Kushti wrestling, we see a form of wrestling which was developed in the Middle East where participants wrestle for a total of 25 to 30 minutes until a victor is deter determined either by a pin or a knockout. And finally, we have freestyle or Greco-Roman wrestling, which is the form of wrestling we will be discussing in today's video. The five ways to score in a wrestling match. One is the takedown. Two is the escape. Three is by reversal. Four is through a near fall. And five are penalty points. In freestyle wrestling, a takedown rewards two points for taking the opponent down to the mat and having complete control over them. An escape will reward one point for overcoming your opponent when you were down on the mat. And a reversal rewards two points when your opponent has you down on the mat and you flip the odds by gaining control over them. A near, a near fall may reward two to three points. These points are rewarded when you nearly pin your opponent. Um, a near fall pin is when both shoulders are held for two seconds within, within four inches of the mat, or one shoulder touches the mat and the other shoulder is at a 45 degree angle coming down to the mat, or the wrestler can be held in a high bridge or back on both elbows. If a near fall lasts for two seconds, then you get two points. If a near fall lasts for five seconds, then you gain three points. The opponent is also awarded one or two points if any of the following infractions are committed. This includes illegal holds. Um, there are several holds that the referee, referee will penalize you for without warning. Um, and then there are other holds called potentially dangerous holds, which the referee might make you let go of, but will not penalize you for. Technical violations such as grabbing the clothing, grabbing the mat or headgear will also result in penalty points. And in this form of wrestling, matches are won by pinning an opponent's shoulders flat to the mat, either by technical fall or a 15-point lead. And they are also won by outscoring your opponent at the end of the three rounds. Next, I will discuss conditioning for freestyle wrestling. Um, traditionally, an Olympic-style match is composed of three rounds lasting three minutes each. Um, here we have Olympic, three rounds, three minutes collegiate one round of two minutes and two rounds of three minutes in high school three rounds of two minutes so during this time wrestlers try and score as many points as possible and because of the short bursts of grappling and takedowns wrestlers will primarily focus on training their anaerobic systems so they can have the power to take down their opponent however aerobic training and conditioning are still very important because you must be able to last throughout each round um, as you can see, the length of each round gradually increases as the level of competition increases. Children usually start wrestling around ages as young as four or five. And the primary focus at this age is to develop coordination and emotional maturity. 
Wrestling at this age should be fun and not heavily focused on competition, as children can easily burn out due to the nature of the sport. Wrestling is very stressful on the body and can take a great toll on a child's mind who is just getting into the sport. Um, the key here is to keep them interested and develop their love for fitness as they grow older. Wrestlers often report feeling sick before competitions due to nerves and they're easily irritated by distractions which can cause them to lose sight of their goal. Here on this slide I have psychological factors in wrestling. Um, we have nerves, a loss of confidence, or an increase in tension. Wrestling is considered to be the most important activity that they participate in, so they can also suffer from a loss of confidence, which will then lead to reduced activity, lethargic movements, an unhappy appearance, um, they may isolate themselves from others, uh, their answers to questions may not contain as much information as they normally would, so they may be holding something back or hiding something from you. Um, they do as they're told, however, they do it without enthusiasm and they have a total lack of attention. Uh, an increase in tension will also occur and what this will do is it will arise and it will is considered a precursor to anxiety. Uh, this usually occurs in wrestlers when they are too aroused without having total mental control. Due to the excess arousal level, an athlete may use way too much energy or become so nervous and so stressed that their performance suffers greatly. Um, increased tension is the most common sensation experienced in wrestling as it drives the momentum of each and every matchup that the wrestlers perform in. And now to combat the factors wrestlers may use mental skills in their training and this will help increase their performance levels. Strategies such as imagery, self-talk, coping behaviors, mood words, or task relevant thinking can all be applied. Performance enhancement imagery can be implemented when there is a loss of confidence. Uh, this assists the athlete in keeping the primary focus of their goal in mind. This also allows the athlete to rehearse each section of his or her competition strategy. Self-talk is also another great way to perform against a loss of confidence. Uh, the power of self-talk is held in its encouraging focus. Um, positive cell talk can pump a wrestler up for an upcoming match so they are properly engaged on the task at hand. Next, coping behaviors are very important um, to develop as they can reduce the chance of developing increased stress or anxiety. Wrestlers tend to dwell on their mistakes, so a coping strategy, for example, may be to analyze the mistake, correct it, and then move on, forget about it. This can also be paired with mood words to allow the athlete to continue to grow and learn. With task relevant thinking, a wrestler can focus on maintaining form and purpose. In this case, an example would be focusing on positioning, their intensity, their movements, their initiation on their holes, and body positioning. Um, task relevant thinking is a mental skill which can help a wrestler keep their head in the game at all times. And to ensure this is possible, the development of a pre-competition strategy can help a wrestler increase their self-control. In other words, they have the ability to control as many variables as possible to reduce any stress or anxiety they may be experiencing. For example, they may plan what and when they will eat their meals. They may have an equipment preparation list to increase their organization. They may prepare for travel by double checking their bags. Some athletes may plan the exact time of their pre-competition warm-up. The idea of this control is to enable the athlete to take full advantage of the time that they have. Um, without this total sense of control, an athlete may either perform poorly or even suffer greater psychological disadvantages during competition. To conclude, we have determined that mental training can help fight against factors such as performance anxiety, and it can greatly increase levels of performance during competition. Due to the mental factors and the nature of wrestling, it is important to have a mental training program in place to complement the physical training. The sport of wrestling is an up and down roller coaster of emotions, and to successfully implement these strategies, a picture of mental context must be created in practice and through tournaments. 
Without this mental formula, success and excellence can seem nearly impossible for a wrestler. So once again, mental training skills can help fight against performance anxiety, they can help improve performance, and they are just as important as the physical training. Um, therefore, it is the coach's job to equip each and every athlete with the necessary tools to achieve peak performance in the scope of wrestling.